Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffles.andrainboots.com. Today I'm going to share a file with you to make Christmas wine tags with the Xtool M1 Ultra, but you can use any laser. So if you are new to my channel, you can always go to your YouTube settings, go to playback speed and choose anything above normal to slow things down. Conversely, you can do the same thing and go to playback speed and choose speed things up. So that's anything below that normal. So I just wanted to give you that tip. Now, I'm going to be using the Xtool M1 Ultra. You can see I'll be designing in this program without it on. That green light is not on, but we can still design. When you're designing, you wanna make sure that you choose the processing menu, uh, the correct one. This is lasering on a flat surface or the honeycomb for the M1 Ultra. I urge you to get into a good file management practice, which is by creating a couple of different canvases, original, working, and any kind of testing and notes file. You can use the file menu to import an SVG, or you can just drag and drop it in, which is what I tend to do. Now you'll see there's a lot going on in this set. There's eight different tags. I'm gonna ungroup them, and we'll only be grouping the ones we want. Just FYI, if you grab this in the center, you're going to paste in part. See how it's not a full file? So just FYI, you want to grab all of the piece and then group it together after it's already in this next working file. That way you can turn this all off in the original file and not mess with it, resize it, anything like that. We want to make sure that the working file is on. And you know that because there's, you can see green on the output. Okay, so from here, I want to tell you we are going to use the instructions, so not just me, but other designers do this as well, to give you an idea of what to do. So I'm going to go on the layers panel, which is the bottom left. I'm going to choose red and just set it to cut. Blue, set it to engrave. And that does all three uh, of these tags at once for each of those functions. It's just a quick way of doing things. Now I'm going to choose my material. Xtool has spent a lot of time, money, and effort in helping us with this. And if you are new to lasers, strongly urge you to come in here. We choose user to find material, then we choose whatever material we're using. I'm using basswood. Now you can see when I click in here, I am on all of the red. So when I have these little tiny pieces here, when I use the default settings, sometimes I get little pieces that splinter if I break them off. So I'm going to just change that to two settings. On the engraving, yours may be different. I'm going to be using a masked basswood, which means I'm going to have a pretty cover on the top of it so I don't have to do any sanding later. My settings are going to end up being 50 power, 50 speed, one pass, and 120 LPC or lines per centimeter. So this is my file and I urge you at this point to go ahead and save it. So XCS is not an auto save program. So do get in the habit every few minutes or after you've made a lot of changes to manually save it. Okay, so now we're technically ready to get our machine ready. I'm gonna remove the print module that I had in earlier in the day and I'm going to insert the laser module. One of the reasons I love this machine isn't just because it's versatility, that right there is the easiest way to put in a laser module I've ever seen. So I'm gonna remove my base plate because I am going to be using the honeycomb. I do not have the smart air assist for this machine and the honeycomb helps me immensely without it. So my piece of basswood, I mentioned I'm going to be using a paper masking. This is from Tape Man Blue. I will put the link down below. I love this stuff and I hope if you don't love sanding things, which I don't, uh, this stuff is going to be a good, good investment. So I'm just putting it on both the front and the back because like I said, I'm lazy. I'm actually really busy this time of year, as you are too. So I'm just going to brayer this down. If you do not have a brayer roller, don't worry. Use a scraper and just make sure you get all of the bubbles and creases out. I'm going to load that masked basswood into my machine. And because my wood is a little bit warped, I'm going to go ahead and pop in the uh, magnets to hold it down. Now, I do want to position my crosshair over the material and then close the lid so that I can come up here to this auto measure. When I select that, you're going to see it like thinking, thinking, and then it'll input our measurement. Now, what happens in the machine 
is it's going to move and then drop. Now that is perfectly normal. When people mention drop laser, that is not what they're talking about. That is exactly what we want to happen. From there, we need to tell the laser where to process. Oh, I forgot. And now I have to put in my settings because I totally forgot to do so. Again, you can use these sliders. You can, um, you can type it in or you can use the sliders, but I'm just going to come back to that in a second. I'm going to do the mass or marking, which is telling the laser what, where you're going to work. So from this screen, I'm going to actually open the lid and go all the way up to the left uppermost portion of my material. You'll see my little um, magnets in the way, so I'm just gonna move that up and then move my crosshair over to the left. You know, don't go real fast, but kind of keep it in mind. When you push the white button on the front of the machine, a little red dot appears. Then you move it to the bottom rightmost portion of our material, hit the white button on the front of the machine, and a rectangle will appear. We hit end marking and done to lock that in. Then we just select everything and drag it in. Now, whether you process one or all at a time, you don't have to redo this. Okay, so after I get that into position, I'm going to close the lid because we cannot frame the M1 Ultra unless we close the lid. Framing allows you, a little note's gonna pop up, I wanna show you that. Framing allows you to get zero power and the laser will map out exactly what it will do. So when that pop-up comes up, you hit start on the front of the machine and then the laser will just say, hey, this is the area I'm gonna be working in. See, it's not the entire area we marked. And that will save you. I will tell you if you're brand new to lasering, go ahead and look that up. Just, just start getting in the habit of doing it. All right. So we hit completed on the framing and then now I'm going to turn these two off because I have to run. So I'm just going to be doing this first one at this time. I'm going to pop in my 50, 50 because I could see it wasn't in and then we're going to process this. So once I, again, I'm just typing in 50, 50, you can click on the pretty little picture and choose the 50 right here, or you can move the slider or you can type in the number. All three will do the same thing. Okay. So now I'm going to hit process at the bottom, right? And you'll see this screen come up, tells you how much time is estimated. We hit start to send the file and then we hit start on the machine to actually start the actual laser. So this is obviously sped up. <laughs> All right, so if you are new to lasers, when it finishes the engraving portion, you do not have to do anything, okay? So you can see this is real time. When it finishes this, it will automatically start cutting. And again, I have two passes on my cuts, but again, I'm gonna get this done. All right, what happens in your software is you'll get two notices. If you happen to be working in another program, a little white message will pop up and you can get the green complete button. If you're like me, I am leaving, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and then get my next two ready. So I'm actually gonna just do, tell you, you can just do one at a time or you can get to do them all at the same time. Straight out of the machine, take the paper masking off and you can see we have no work to do. Isn't that nice? I love the masking uh, when we're busy. Okay, so you see the little pieces in the middle. Sometimes the masking will take it off. Sometimes my fingernail, sometimes the little pick tool or sometimes some Gorilla Tape. Just depends on what I'm doing. But you can see that's ready after we give it a wipe. Now I also will seal these with a single coat of Krylon spray sealant, um, but you don't have to do that. You can just add some ribbon and gift this thing. So I get asked a lot about how I finish my ornaments and my gift tags. So I'm just going to show you three ways right here. I'm using this suede cord, which is magical. I will put the link down below. I have shared it with everybody since I found it. I'm going to put in a tiny little piece of ribbon here, closing it inside of the hanger. Easiest way possible. Looks really cute. Now, I wouldn't use that on this normally because I have that space at the top. I would do this. This is just a bow out of that same ribbon and I'm going to super glue it to the front. That's what I would do on a wine card. Wouldn't necessarily do that on an ornament that's gonna get packed away, but it's really cute. The last way is I just added um, some masking tape to that cording after I looped it through and then just slide on a bead or two or three descending size beads all of it will work. You can also engrave the beads for a really fun look. All right, that is it for me today. I'm gonna put the link to this file down below, but I'd love to hear if you would give this project a try. 
Hey, thanks so much for being here with me today. Please like this video, subscribe, and have a great day.